I am Pup Incas. I am actually um, from Louisville, Kentucky, born and raised. Okay. Now, I understand that currently you are the international pup. Yes, I am the IPC international puppy for this year. Um, I'll be actually stepping down in July, so I've got wow. a few more months left. So. Okay. <laughs> so... Tell, tell me about that role. What, what, what does it mean to be International Puppy oh, uh, IPC? Lot, yeah. What's the C? Less, um, it's International Puppy Club. Club, okay. Stuff like that, yeah. so, um, it's a branch off because there's actually two International Puppy kind of titles, as it were. Um, there's the International Puppy and Trainer Contest. Okay. So they have an IPTC International Puppy and the IPC International Puppy, and we've decided to make sure that we put that little IPC or IPTC in front of it so that people get less confused okay and is there an essential difference between the two or are they there is a bit of a difference um the contest for iptc is a lot more like a dog show mm -hmm. um so they actually have the puppies stack and they the judges inspect their you know how they're stacked and they do treat uh, different tricks and stuff like that so um it's a lot more like a dog show mm -hmm. with humans filling the role of the dog um and ipc is a bit more kind of free flowy. It's almost like the hippies of the group, as it were, okay. um, and stuff. And so there's less structure, like a dog show and stuff like that. And it's more akin to a traditional kind of leather contest. And the fact that it's you know more um, a fantasy kind of portion of the contest, yeah. which is new this year, yeah. um, and stuff. So it's less dog showy and more. Okay. So how did you become involved in human pop play? Uh, that's a long and complicated story sometimes. Um, I actually came into the kink world from the furry community. Mm -hmm. um, and so being a part of the furry community, I had a fursona over there, um, which is actually a tiger. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started out into animal role play actually as a kitty kind of role player. Um, I found the kink world and um, also kind of developed a pony um, play aspect as well. And so a lot of people actually know me as Gypsy. Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, more so the pony side and just kind of the regular name, nickname-ish thing I go by um, and stuff. And then as I became kind of more involved in the kink and BDSM and more the leather scene and stuff like that, um, I had a lot of friends who were into pup play and things like that. And so I became exposed to it and um, it just kind of clicked one day and I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to get on those, you know, get down in the mosh and get with the other boys and mm -hmm. romp around with them and stuff like that. And that was probably a good four or five years ago and stuff that I was in my first mosh and stuff and I actually moshed. Um, it was right after a leather contest at Mr. Midwest and uh, I was in a leather kilt and a tank top with my hair done all pretty because that's what girls do sometimes. <laughs> um, and so yeah I was down on the mats you know leather kilt and everything and stuff and had a blast doing it so. So it's great to see female pups because certainly within the circles that I hang out, there, there aren't many mm -hmm. female pups. What's it, what's it like being on that side of the, the spectrum? Um, for me, it's sometimes challenging um, and stuff like that. It was actually really touching one of the first few moshes that I went to. And of course, you know, and years ago and stuff like that, you really didn't see kind of any females um, and stuff. And you know, I'm, I'm used to people being sometimes kind of standoffish or sometimes kind of like, I don't know what to do or, you know, completely, you know, we're not having any of that sometimes. Um, but one of the first few moshes I was in, there was actually a pup who I was trying to engage, you know, and kind of tossing a ball to him and stuff like that. And he just was kind of off on the sides and stuff and trying to bring him in. Mm. And he really, you know, wasn't having any of it. And I, I'm not one to push, you know, and stuff. So mm. I... Um, you know, what about my thing, did my thing and stuff. And the pup actually came up to me the next day at the brunch for the event and apologized to me. He was like, I really want to apologize to you. And I'm like, for what? And he was like, you know, I couldn't get over the fact that you were female and that, you know, I had never seen a female in a mosh before. I couldn't get over my own issues and my own insecurities and my own kind of problems and stuff like that and engage with you and I want to apologize because I didn't engage with you mm. and stuff and I was just like oh and it, and it really mm. you know kind of hit me in the feels as it were and you know it kind of like was like oh maybe sometimes it's not that they're trying to be exclusionary or they're trying to be mean about it and stuff like that is that sometimes they just don't know what to do or kind of how to wrap their you know human brains around this new thing that they've seen so and I think 
for many people, human pup play is there's sexual aspects to it, mm -hmm. and if somebody's identifying as gay, then having a female present, it may present. I don't know whether it's confronting or or unexpected or different, but maybe that's part of it. It may be um, part of it and stuff. A lot of the public moshes and stuff, because it's something we see posted on like Puppy 101 or kind of brought up in discussions a lot of times is like, you know, I'm trans or I'm female or something other than typical, you know, gay male um, and stuff. And a lot of times in public moshes, it really just doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, and so you'll see, you know, the guys kind of every once in a while, they'll kind of, you know, get on top of each other and hump for like a few quick seconds and, mm -hmm. you know, things go about their business. Um, and every once in a while, they kind of hump me mm -hmm. just because they can. Um, <laughs> And stuff, but it really is an interesting concept because in my head I'm just like, but I like dick just as much as the guys do, mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and so there's been, you know, sometimes where people have had, you know, kind of private room parties or whatever. And obviously I'm not going to impose upon their fun times and what they want to do or say, you know, well, you shouldn't do that because it doesn't include everybody. Mm. I'm a firm believer that a lot of, you know, there's time and place for everything. Yeah. And if people want to do that, have at it, you know, do, do what makes you happy. Yeah. So have you met any heterosexual males that are into pup play? Yes. You have? Yes. So where I have are met they actually hiding? a few. Oddly enough, they hide in the gay bars with all the gay guys, which makes it really confusing for me because I don't know who to hit on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, actually, um, I've met a few of them and, you know, it kind of takes me back and stuff like that or whatever because I'm just like, oh, wait, 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 you like that? Hey. Yay. Bonus. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but there's actually a lot of kind of bisexual um, pups as well that I've kind of met here and there um, and stuff like that so it's interesting to find it and stuff like that I just you know maybe it's a fault of my own but I always kind of assume that if you know you're in the gay leather bar or the leather contest and stuff that generally you're going to be some spectrum of you know gay in general um, and sometimes people are sometimes people aren't and stuff so it's always a nice surprise to be like oh hey well I think it's a fairly safe bet isn't it so generally yeah yeah there's a higher percentage there does seem to be <laughs> from what I've noticed at claw 16 mm -hmm. there do seem to be a few homosexuals around just one or two one or two yeah, you can spot them you can tell <laughs> so what's it like being involved in the kink world mm -hmm. that's you know this event is essentially a, a very a very homosexual event. Mm -hmm. What's it like being involved in the kink world as as a female who likes guys? Um, for me, I don't know. It's, it's interesting because I've always found myself to be not like everyone else mm -hmm. um, in general and stuff. And I think a lot of people can you know say that as well. But um, I always tend to have a lot of abnormal friends as it were whether it be within the furry community um, or it be into other you know parts and aspects of my life and stuff and so I've always kind of been in groups where I'm not the majority mm -hmm. um, or people like me you know mostly straight um, female you know identified people and stuff and so you know I've always kind of hung around with the outliers and the people on the fringes of things um, and so it, it's it's interesting to kind of see people that are similar to me and stuff like that but I really do love and appreciate all the friends that I have that aren't normal um, mm -hmm. you know normal is really for me only a setting on the dryer mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. otherwise you know it doesn't exist so yeah yeah so where do you see the moving forward with human pup play what what, what, what personally for you mm -hmm. it's, it's a it's a different experience I imagine where do you see human pup play heading in the past in the next five to ten years um, for me and stuff, I'd really, you know, like to see obviously the continued expansion of pup play, um, stuff like that. But I know one of the things that um, Papa Wolf Roth and I have talked about is actually doing a kind of more puppy event similar to an event like Claw, where there's no contest, there's no anything and stuff, but where there's education and where there's abilities for puppies from all different walks of life to be able to come together and stuff like that because rubber has different protocols and different needs and stuff like that than leather pups do and furries have different you know kind of standards and different things that they do or like to enjoy um, than you know other people do and providing a safe space for kind of everybody to be able to explore that mm -hmm. and stuff would be really awesome and something that I would love to help get started for the community um, stuff like that and so I see it's almost coming into its own um, and stuff like that and really kind of becoming its own 
thing. Thing, yeah, its own yeah. community, its own thing, and stuff like that, where we aren't necessarily dependent upon leather bars on, being the only place that kind of allows us to be us and stuff like that, and events, you know, a claw that allow us some space and some time to mm -hmm. do our thing and stuff like that, and to where we can really kind of have our own little our own little doghouse that we can run around in, you know. Mm -hmm. Are there any resources currently for, for people like yourself? In regards? To, to human pup play. So for, for non-gay males, mm -hmm. what resources are available for people interested in animal role play? Um, a lot of it, for me, that I've found has actually just been taking the resources that are there and kind of looking at it with a different lens, as mm -hmm. it were, um, and stuff. And it's almost like, you know, if you wanted to do training for your you know, puppy and stuff like that, you would take a bio dog training book and kind of modify it so that it was applicable to a human body and the, you know, abilities for the function um, and stuff like that. And it's almost kind of the same thing that, you know, regardless of gender identity or sexual identity and stuff like that, you can look at a lot of the videos and resources and have conversations with people and stuff like that to where it doesn't, you know, have to be its own different thing, you know, it's mm. no point in reinventing the wheel as it were yep. um, and stuff like that, but look at them, you know, through a slightly different lens and, mm. you know, everything makes sense. Absolutely. Um, now, you've, you've mentioned the, the furry fandom, you've mentioned pony play, mm -hmm. you've mentioned human pup play, and that kind of comes into my mind, uh, people like Louie and Hunt. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a particular heroes within the, the pup community that you've found have been able to help you, you know, move forward or, or at least have think, yeah, I like what they're doing, I want to follow what they're doing? A lot of it is, for me, um, just the inspiration to be. Mm -hmm. um, and stuff, Lillian actually, um, and she and I actually got to meet um, when I was in Portland for the Northwest Puppy Contest, um, which was, you know, a bucket list achievement for me. Mm. Um, because being involved in the pony play community, I had heard of her and stuff like that, and I had seen Tyke, and I had seen her whole entourage photos for Folsom and different things, and it was it was very, to me, beautiful and very mm. something that I was like, man, that's that's awesome. Like, if I could ever, mm. you know, be involved in all that, that would be most awesome. Yeah. Um, and... It was just kind of the thing that, you know, well, if it's okay for them to do it, then, you know, I can do some of that and I can be, you know, it was, it was more of an inspiration just to be who I am and to accept, you know, kind of all the different parts of me and all the different aspects and things like that and stuff and to make it okay and to no normalize it um, and stuff. So there's not particularly just one person or, you know, anything that has been a specific role model mm -hmm. um, and it's it's interesting because I was just at IMSL mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago and Vi Johnson had given the keynote and had one of the things that um, it stated is that we stand on the shoulders of giants mm -hmm. um, and so everyone in their journey through whatever it is whether it be puppy play or leather or pony or whatever always has those people that they look up to and the elders in the community and stuff mm -hmm. like that and you know, that being able to now be in a place where, you know, these people have inspired me mm -hmm. and yet now I'm finding new people that I'm, you know, inspiring and that mm -hmm. are, you know, kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, it's you and, you know, you've said mm -hmm. hi to me and I'm like, but I'm just me. Like, I know, right? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you're so sweet. Mm -hmm. um, but it really, you know, is, isn't one particular person. There's a lot of, a lot of people and a lot of names I could name off and mm -hmm. things like that. But, you know, a lot of people don't know or don't realize the assistance or the help or the, you know, what they did actually changed, you know, something in me or, you know, made me think about something differently or mm. um, things like that and stuff. And so it's, it's a lot of, I do a lot of internal monologuing and a lot of internal mm. processing and stuff like that. And so, you know, a simple action, seeing someone do or whatever, you know, can kind of go, hmm, and then... I'm off on this little thought train and stuff like that and it, you know, it, it helps, you know, to be able to see and be out in the community and see things and, you know, kind of experience things and yeah. stuff. So I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wanted to get in contact with you, what's mm -hmm. the easiest way for them to do that? Um, it's actually pup.incus, I-N-C-U-S, mm -hmm. at gmail.com um, or on my Facebook. Um, if you search Pup Incus and stuff, it's actually like a public figure page um, and stuff that I have there and you can send me a message on there if you're cool. want to connect. And just 
in wrapping up, mm-hmm. do, you, do you have a message out there for, for female pops? Uh, or yeah, anybody. Yeah, who, yeah, exactly. For anybody who feels exactly. there's, a, not... there's a lot of people. Um, honestly, one of the big reasons that I ran, um, and I told all the judges this ahead of time and stuff like that, you know, win or lose, um, for me, I wanted to make sure that people knew that this community would accept you. Um, and stuff because I came in very nervous very you know like I don't know if anybody's gonna like me I don't know if they're gonna you know be okay with me um, and you know the love and the support for this from this community that I've gotten um, and stuff like that I wanted to make sure that people understood that that was going to be something that they could experience and stuff like that and you didn't have to be the stereotype mm-hmm. um, to be a part of the community to make a difference to go out and, you know, volunteer at something or to help out or to, you know, just even stand to the wallflower and watch things um, happen and stuff that, you know, you don't have to be like everybody else, that you can be free to be yourself and to, you know, be who you want to be and how you want to be and stuff like that. And that there, you know, there's lots of love and lots of, you know, education and lots of opportunities and fun and stuff that's to be had in this community. And I greatly, greatly encourage people to come out and at least, you know, make some connections, maybe make a friend or two, you know, share some fun times and, you know, if it's for you, then keep going. If it's not, then yeah, that's okay too. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for your participation. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.